Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the latest on another high water rescue that left a mother and four children stranded on a vehicle. Plus, we'll have the latest on former President Bill Clinton, who was admitted to a Southern California hospital. And here at home this morning, waiting on a pretty strong cold front. Lots of low clouds might see some fog out there. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is October 15th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we got a lot of rain, but then it got pretty hot yesterday. It was warm and very humid and all that's about to be swept away. Katie Blake was telling us yesterday, if you have stuff on your yard like Halloween lawn mm -hmm. ornaments, Time to batten down the hatches, leave them uninflated, or even bring them in, Mike. Yeah, 15, 25 mile per hour winds gusting from there later on this afternoon and tonight. But we got to worry about this morning, first of all, because of the moisture in the ground from yesterday's rain, and we're already seeing a lot of uh, thick fog. So, front's going to be moving through about early afternoon here in town. You can actually see uh, kind of that hazy look looking out past the airport right now. Quarter mile visibility Hondo, two new Braunfels, mile and a, uh, three quarters at Pleasanton, still in the San Antonio proper, we've got good visibility, but that can change. You can turn the corner and run into some of that fog. You validate a lot of fog and not as much off to the east, but again, it is still early and as the morning progresses, as we get closer to sunrise, this fog is going to continue to thicken up in places. We're still at 74 degrees. The normal average low is low 60s, so 10, 15 degrees above normal. All this humidity out there, all these dew points are well up in the upper 60s and 70s, but again, that's going to be changing in a big way by later on this afternoon. Mold is high, ragweed is moderate. Temperatures uh, may change a degree or two this morning. We'll have some of that patchy fog around here. And then later on today, now this is after school. Actually, 85 is going to be about two o'clock in the afternoon. And then the front comes on through here. It may squeeze out a shower or two. Um, 20% chance at best. All that's going to be gone, by the way, by football tonight. But temperatures will be dropping down. So by late afternoon, we're looking at mid upper 70s, and then it will continue to drop down. And yes, very windy. Great looking weekend as far as temperatures are concerned. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Mark. Thank you, Mike. This morning, two children, two teens and their mother recovering after they were rescued when their vehicle was nearly submerged in high water on the far south side. Happened last night off of FM 1937 in South Flores near the Medina River. When deputies with the Bear County Sheriff's Office and fire officials arrived, they saw two teens and two children on the roof of the vehicle. Fire officials said the children's mother, the driver, went around a barricade to try to get across the roadway, but the water was too high. Two children under the age of five and the other three occupants were able to climb to safety across the ladder of one of the San Antonio Fire Department's trucks. Mom did go around the barricade. I mean, it's important to note that that is an arrestable offense. I mean, obviously, mom's been through a lot today. We didn't want to go that route. But quite frankly, she could be facing criminal charges later on down the road. You know, I think at that point, if you're facing criminal charges, that's the least of your worries. Uh, I think she, she pretty quickly realized that her herself and her four kids could be gone. No injuries were reported. Sheriff Javier Salazar says once again, a reminder when you are urged to turn around don't drown. And recovery efforts for a 52 year old woman will resume this morning. That's after the vehicles she and a five year old girl were traveling in were swept away by high water in East Bear County yesterday. The five year old girl's body was recovered from a submerged vehicle. She was a student in the East Central Independent School District. Sheriff Javier Salazar says both of the vehicles came upon a swollen creek near the intersection of North Graytown Road and FM 1518 in St. Hedwig as the families were taking children to school. The five-year-old girl was in a vehicle with another man and several other children who were rescued. The girl, however, did not make it out of the vehicle and her body was recovered yesterday afternoon. The sheriff says the other vehicle involved had a woman and two other children inside. Both children there made it out of the vehicle safely, but the 52-year-old woman did not make it out. This morning, former President Bill Clinton is in the hospital. He's suffering from a blood infection, which has landed him in the intensive care unit. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning, former President Bill Clinton is hospitalized in Southern California, being treated in the ICU for a blood infection 
also known as sepsis. Doctors at UC Irvine Medical Center are stressing Clinton's diagnosis is not related to COVID and is not related to his history of heart disease. My sources are telling me that President Clinton on Tuesday evening was feeling rather fatigued at a private event in California, and he went to the hospital and they did a routine checkup in the emergency department and they identified an infection of his blood. According to the hospital, Clinton was given an IV and is responding well to antibiotics. It's the latest health scare for the 75-year-old since leaving office. He had quadruple bypass surgery in 2004 and a pair of stents implanted in 2010. Sepsis can be a serious matter, but since President Clinton is about to be transitioned to oral antibiotics, it is less likely that the infection has affected his heart. In the past, the former president has attributed his health problems to a bad diet, a busy work schedule, and ignoring warning signs. Since I left the White House, maybe if I'd stayed on a lower yeah. fat diet, you know, maybe if I had not eating so many hamburgers and steaks, you know, which I love. Maybe if I, you know, had slightly less stress in my life, I worked as hard since I left office as I did when I was there. Maybe it would have been different. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. A federal appeals court is once again allowing Texas to continue banning most abortions. Last night's decision keeps the law known as Senate Bill 8 in place. As the Justice Department tries to halt the law, the Biden administration is suing Texas over the restriction that bans abortions once cardiac activity is detected, usually around six weeks. The Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals has now allowed the law to proceed three times since August. The Texas law allows private citizens to collect at least $10,000 in damages if they bring a successful lawsuit against an abortion provider who violates the restrictions. A commission tasked with studying potential changes to the Supreme Court is releasing a first look at its review. The draft report released last night is cautious in discussing proposals for expanding the court. However, it does approve of term limits for justices. The 36-member bipartisan commission has been studying court reform, but it was not charged with making recommendations under the White House order that cre created it. A final report from the committee is expected in about a month and would go to the president then. Millions of U.S. families are receiving their fourth enhanced child tax credit payment. The IRS says the checks start going out today. That average $428. The coronavirus relief package in March is making the credit fully refundable, triggering the payments. Columbia University researchers think the first two payments lifted more than 3 million kids out of poverty. Unfortunately, the IRS says it's had... It's uh, hard to get the checks to low-income families that didn't file taxes in both 2019 and 2020. And time now is 437. It's about 74 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, important things you need to know now to make sure your smoke detectors are working properly. Also next, we recap last night's high school football action and a look ahead to UTSA's homecoming game this weekend. And Mike is talking cold front. It's going to sweep all those low clouds and fog away, but that's going to happen later today. Much more on that in your weekend forecast coming up. We are just getting started right here on GMSA. Time for a look at morning sports. The Stevens Falcons looking to try to take down the Taft Raiders last night at Ferris Stadium here in San Antonio. Raiders taking a big risk early. Fourth and six, Stevens. Uh, 44 and Taft is going for it. Quarterback Justice Hurt rolls to his left, going deep to Jaden Aleman, who makes a great one leaping grab all the way down to the Falcons 12. A few plays later, Hurt takes the handoff, runs to his left, and then finds daylight all the way to the end zone. Six yard touchdown makes it 7 0 Taft. Final from Ferris 21 19 Taft. Packed house at Gus Stadium last night to see the Warren Warriors take on the Jay Mustangs. Warren up 14-2 early, and they add to it. Running back Nathan Medelez going right up the middle for a 22-yard touchdown. 21-2 Warren. Warriors defense coming up big. Mustangs fumble the handoff. Ball loose. Diego Ramirez swoops in, and he's off to the races. 87-yard fumble return makes it 28-2 Warren. The final from Gus. 42-16 Warren. The UTSA Roadrunners looking to extend their record breaking six game win streak this season to seven when they host the Rice Owls this Saturday afternoon at the Alamo Dome for their homecoming week. 
One of the big concerns going to this game, the fact Rice had last week off to recover after back-to-back -back wins prior to their bye week. Redshirt sophomore cornerback Ken Robinson is coming off his best game of the season. Had five tackles, three solo, two assists to go along with his three pass defenses. Roadrunners are hoping fans pack the dome for their 5 p.m. kickoff on Saturday. And the L.A. Dodgers are in the NLCS after rallying in the night to beat the San Francisco Giants last night 2-1 in the Bay Area. Cody Bellinger broke a 1-1 deadlock with an RBI single that scored Justin Turner, who started the rally by getting hit by a pitch with one out. Now the Dodgers will face the Atlanta Braves tomorrow night. Of course, the ALCS begins tonight. Houston Astros hosting the Boston Red Sox at 7 o'clock at Minute Maid Park. And time now is 4.43 and it's about 74 degrees. Still ahead, October is Fire Prevention Month and up next, how to make sure your smoke detector is working properly and what may be triggering false alarms. And next, new charges against that South Carolina lawyer, Alex Murdaugh, will tell you why he's accused of stealing millions in insurance money. And welcome back. It's 445. Alex Murda, the South Carolina attorney whose wife and son were murdered, has been arrested for stealing millions in insurance money. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new charges against Alex Murda. The 53-year-old taken into custody in Florida Thursday morning upon his release from a drug rehab facility in Orlando. Authorities charging him with two felony counts of obtaining property by false pretenses relating to a recent lawsuit accusing him of stealing millions in insurance money which was meant to go to the sons of Gloria Satterfield. His family's longtime housekeeper who died after a purported trip and fall incident at the Murdaugh South Carolina home in 2018. In a statement to ABC News, an attorney for Satterfield's son says in part the charges are, quote, a very good start to holding everyone accountable who either participated knowingly or breached their duties. The bottom line is nobody is above the law. And coming up at 7 a.m., an ABC News exclusive, one of Alex Murdaugh's lawyers talks to George Stephanopoulos in a live interview. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. One well, other news this morning, removing or disabling your smoke detector because cooking mishaps keep tripping the sensor can be dangerous. So 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz looks at the most common false alarm triggers and which detectors to look for. It's annoying those false alarm chirps or piercing sounds from your smoke detector. But if you're tempted to disable it, that's a risky move. Always assume there's a fire. When you determine that it's safe, then you can get to the root cause. Some of the things that will cause an alarm to go off are dying batteries, steam from a shower, dust, or even spiders inside the alarm. First, the easy fix, the battery. Replace it every six months. If it's sealed inside, replace the unit every 10 years. To reduce other alarm triggers, it helps to understand how detectors work. There are two main types, photoelectric and ionization. Photoelectric alarms respond to particles in air created by smoldering fires or steam showers. They're less prone to false alarms caused by cooking, so consider them for areas near kitchens. Ionization alarms are triggered by the open flames. All right, we just had some sort of issue. We will try to work that out. Right now it is 448. And we are tracking uh, what could be a cold front, but later, right now, it's pretty mild, as Mike was saying earlier. Mike is walking over to, it's now become a light jog. Trying to work out some bugs. Okay. Anyway, Hi. good yeah. morning. Good morning. Hey, one thing, yeah, we do have a cold front moving through later on. Uh, we need to look. We gotta flip flip those pictures. Oh, yeah, I know. You know. Yeah, we need to so we talk to the art department other. and get the whole box flipped. Because <laughs> right now I'm just yeah. looking at a blank wall over there. Yeah. Place. Anyway, uh, we we've got to deal with some fog this morning. Also, the other thing on the serious side to be on the lookout for most all of the the creeks and rivers, streams, everything from say about 35 I 10 south and east of there are spilling over their banks. There are flood uh, warnings posted for most all of the, the creeks and rivers. So just watch it along those because we're still going to continue to have some of that runoff, obviously. And with all the moisture in the ground right now, that is feeding some of this fog. Quarter mile visibility Hondo, mile three quarters Kerrville. Pleasanton has actually gone up a little bit, but notice how it dropped slightly at Port S.A. And I'm waiting for the airport to uh, start 
calling in with some reduced visibility. Bernie Stage, New Braunfels all have some fog out there in New Valley and not as bad off to the east, although down around Beeville, just a half mile. So we'll be dealing with this this morning. It is going to stick around at times. It's going to get thicker. Obviously, it usually gets thicker once we head in right toward sunrise or just after that. OK, the front is up to the north of us. San Angelo is still 65. Abilene 65. Midland drops to the mid 50s. 40s up there in portions of the hill country and we're going to be close to probably the, the hill country by Sunday morning, maybe in the about mid 40s. We're going to be, I think, staying about 50 here in town. And look at how the air is going to be drying out. Very warm and humid out ahead of that front, but then that bone dry air is going to work its way on in here. And that's going to take place early afternoon, obviously a little sooner in portions of the hill country. As the front moves on through, it may start to squeeze out just a couple of sprinkly showers around the area. I even doubt if there's any rumbles of thunder, but it'll just be this sort of broken line of a couple of showers. And by dinner time, most all of that is going to be well south of the area. So we're not going to have to worry about any showers left over. Doesn't look like for any of the football games tonight. One thing that we are going to keep a lot of kind of some mid high clouds around. This looks cloudier than what it's going to be. It'll just be sort of that veiled sunshine and some high clouds over the weekend, but still a good looking weekend around here. And as far as the uh, dew points and the wind shift, this uh, shows it pretty well. Again, by early afternoon, the wind shifts around. And so once we get into the late afternoon, it's going to be windy. We're going to see temperatures drop down. We hit our high today right around, oh, say two o'clock two, three o'clock and then temperatures will be dropping. If you're going to a football game tonight, I would definitely take a jacket with you. It's also, like I said, going to be on the breezy side and then this bone dry air comes on in here as we go on into the weekend and that's going to allow for some really nice mornings, cool, actually chilly. We'll call it that. I mean, mid low 50s this weekend in the mornings and then only low to mid 70s in the afternoon, 82 at noon and then right about two o'clock we're going to bump up to 85 degrees. Then by later on in the afternoon going for 78 and a couple of sprinkly showers as the front moves through. But by dinner time, most all of that should be down to the south. Any uh, any sort of sprinkles and then windy today winds out of the north about 15 25 miles per hour gusting on top of that still going to be breezy tomorrow mid 50s tomorrow about 50 on Sunday here in town. So we're looking at 40s in the hill country. Oh, it's going to be nice. Is this a window rattling cold front? This is going to be pretty good. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be, you know, and with a very significant, uh, you know, drop in temperatures throughout okay. the afternoon, the humidity is going to drop like a rock as soon as that thing comes on through here and temperatures. Yeah, it's going to be great. Exciting. Yes. Quite the change from yesterday afternoon. Uh huh. <laughs> Open up the windows. Make sure you shut them, though. Oh, yes. Before you go to bed, because it'll be that, <laughs> that chilly in the morning. So. Yes, it will. Thank <laughs> you. If you forget, Mother Nature's going to let you know. 452, about 74 degrees. And coming up next, a look at all the new movies arriving in theaters this weekend. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick 3, 875, Fireball 5. Your daily four numbers, 4170, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 10, 14, 19, 24, 32. And Texas 2-step 1, 15, 26, 28. Bonus ball 35. About five till new film directed by Matt Damon and Ben Affleck is now out in theaters. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. The Last Duel, fighting its way into theaters this weekend. The film based on the true story of controversial sexual assault accusations in 14th century France. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck co-star and co-wrote the film. Affleck telling ABC News the story was fascinating and brand new to him. We were totally like blown away by the story. We, were, we had no idea. I mean, I know it's a, I guess a fairly well-known story still in France because at the time it was the sort of, I don't know what the equivalent would be, the O.J. Simpson case or something, a very famous person uh, accused of a horrible crime. The Last Duel, out now, only in theaters. Oh, no, no. Also out this weekend, the horror sequel Halloween Kills is in theaters and streaming on Peacock. Please. Learn about the origins of the highly influential band The Velvet Underground in a new documentary on Apple TV+. Plus. And Sunday night on HBO, it's the return of the Roy family and all their messy drama with the highly anticipated season three premiere of the Emmy-winning series Succession.
Narrowing down the stories to put in this book was the biggest challenge. Dave Grohl can now add New York Times bestselling author to his list of career accomplishments. His memoir, The Storyteller, just out this week, tops the Times hardcover nonfiction list. It's time to grow up. And Grammy-nominated singer Keisha Cole with a birthday today. She's 40. God, that's good. While celebrity chef Emeril Lagasse is 62. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And the time now is 4.57, and it's 74 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, good news as daily cases of the coronavirus has declined by nearly 50% over the past six weeks. That What that means for the upcoming travel season. And do you need a date? For an upcoming wedding, there's actually an app for that. We're going to tell you about Tinder's new feature coming up in Tech Bytes. And checking the roads with TransGuide. You see some of those low clouds and maybe just a hint of fog in the streetlights around San Antonio. It's going to be far worse in the outlying areas. Mike is tracking visibilities this morning. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The San Antonio Police Department in search of two suspects involved in a shooting that landed one man in the hospital. Details coming up next. And President Biden is praising the country's progress and vaccination efforts in fighting the pandemic as case and hospitalization rates continue to decline. It's humid. It is going to be foggy in some places. And then Mike says a whopper of a cold front is on the way today. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 15th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday. Yay, we made it to Friday. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to the cold front. That's something different. And Mike says this is the one that's going to kind of catch some people off guard, especially as they head to football tonight. Yeah, uh, grab a jacket before you head to a game tonight. You know, we had that one front a few weeks ago, and that was pretty significant, but I think this one's going to be having a little more uh, more of a punch to it. We're going to have some very good winds in behind it. We will see temperatures drop down fairly, fairly quickly and substantially in behind it, as well as obviously the humidity. Right now we are more, well, about 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Mid 70s should be low 60s, and look at that bottom number with all the humidity out there. Dew points down to uh, 73 degrees, so we've got, and those two numbers are running neck and neck, not much of a breeze, and so that's what's helping out with a bunch of fog around the area. So we hit uh, right around 83 at 1, going for 85 at 2 o'clock, but then notice how temperatures drop down throughout the rest of the afternoon and that uh, very small chance for a couple of showers as that front works its way on through here. And then most of that looks like it's going to be gone and swept down to the south once we get in toward football time tonight. The aquifer, big, big, one of the biggest jumps I've seen in a long time, 2.2 feet from all the rain we had yesterday. And the allergens, mold is high. It's probably going to stay high when the count comes out later on this morning. Ragweed is moderate. All right, as far as fog, it's getting pretty uh, pea soup in a lot of places over there toward Hondo. Go out 90. You get to run into some of that fog just as you uh, pass Casterville. And then going up 10, we've got some around Bernie Stage, Kerrville. The airport is now down to six miles. Cast, or excuse me, uh, Port SA, seven and six at New Braunfels. That actually came up ever so slightly. And then more fog further out to the west around Uvalde. Um, not bad at Victoria, but Beeville is just at three quarters of a mile and Catula has a lot of fog. And of course, this usually gets thicker as we roll on through the rest of the morning and approach sunrise. So patchy fog, very mild temperatures down or downright warm this morning. And then that front's going to move through again early afternoon going for two o'clock here in town and it's gonna obviously sooner in the hill country. It's going to squeeze out one or two showers. Those should be gone by actually late afternoon moving down to the south. It is going to be windy. Temperatures will drop down a nice cool night tonight. Chilly mornings mid to lower 50s, which means 40s in the hill country and then mid 70s in the afternoon next week slightly milder and another chance of rain, but not until probably Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Details on the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority getting ready to hit the roads on this Friday morning. Hopefully it is a smooth commute <laughs> for everyone. You know, Mike, I, I really enjoyed the drive to work this morning. I had my cup of coffee, was listening to Adele's new song. The roads were definitely easy on me. And so that's what you're going to expect if you're going to be heading out the door in the next few moments. The roads, at least for right now, are pretty good. And you can see we still have uh, some barricades, though, off 35 at Salado 
Colorado Creek where we had some flooding yesterday. Uh, but right now, traffic is pretty light through some areas. But as Mike mentioned, uh, be careful when you're driving out the door this morning, heading out the door this morning for that patchy fog. But let's take a look around town for 10 at Starcrest. Traffic still light in that area. And the same goes for this shot here at Transguide at 281 at San Pedro. But not too far from that on 281, we are spotting a stalled vehicle there on the southbound lanes right at Bassey Road. So again, make sure you are checking those cars before you get on the highways. Vehicles, but we want to make sure that they're working properly and you won't experience any stalls this early in the morning. But the wider scope does show, yes, it's pretty green on the screen. Obviously, a very different situation that we're seeing this morning. But mornings like this, or situations like what we saw yesterday, really do make you thankful for these kind of commutes that we're going to be having this morning. So far, you're not going to experience any big problems out there on the roads. But those inbound times right now are also still green across the board. So that's the good news. Highway 90, as Mike just mentioned, just take it easy. It's still 18 minute commute time to the downtown San Antonio area. So no big rush this morning. Again, grab that cup of coffee. Enjoy the drive 281 at Grayson. Just a few folks out there this morning. And again, make sure you have your calendars marked because we have some construction to be on the lookout for coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Steven, thank you. New this morning, a shooting on the city's west side sends one man to the hospital. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Good morning, Jonathan. Where exactly did this shooting happen? Good morning, Stephanie. We do know this all happened on the 200 block of South San Joaquin near West Commerce Street at the victim's home. Information is limited, but this is what we know so far. The San Antonio Police Department say two suspects in their 20s drove to this West Side home with only one intention. They say those men pulled up in a dark color vehicle and shouted out for the victim by name. This all happening close to 10 p.m. last night. Police say the victim ended up coming out from inside his home when one of the suspects shot him in the leg. They tell us those two suspects then walked back to, to their vehicle and drove off heading northbound on San Joaquin. Now, the victim was transported, taken to University Hospital and is expected to, to be okay. As far as what motivated the shooting, well, that still remains unclear and, of course, under investigation. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. An FDA advisory panel has voted unanimously to recommend Moderna's booster shot. That same panel will take up Johnson & Johnson's booster today. President Biden is now saying the downward trends in COVID cases proves his pandemic plan is working. ABC's Dan Lieberman has the latest. We do have a unanimous 19 out of 19 yes vote. A key vote from the FDA panel yesterday recommending a third booster shot of the Moderna vaccine to be given six months after the second dose. For anyone 65 and older, 18 and older at high risk from an underlying health condition and whose job may be put at greater risk for exposure to the virus. The Moderna vaccine remains highly effective, showing less waning over time than Pfizer and J&J. &J. The Moderna booster would be only a half dose, data showing that it's enough to restore protection. Today, the panel will review the Johnson & Johnson booster, along with data on the effectiveness of mixing vaccines. I suspect they may recommend a mixing and a matching strategy for J&J. &J. We'll have to see what the panel really decides. Ahead of that FDA meeting, the president praised the country's vaccination efforts. It's working. We're making progress. Nationally, daily cases are down 47%. And Americans may be in for a potentially turbulent holiday travel season. The TSA now reporting that an alarming 40% of their workers remain unvaccinated, with a deadline to get a shot looming just before Thanksgiving. Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. Here at home, San Antonio ISD reacting to the Texas Supreme Court's new ruling to halt the COVID-19 vaccine mandate for district staff. Fourth Court of Appeals said Governor Greg Abbott asserted his power over issuing vaccine mandates at the state level back in April, months before the SAISD mandate. In a statement, SAISD responding, saying in part, quote, we are extremely proud of our efforts in providing abundant access to this life-saving protocol to all our employees and the broader SAISD community. The mandate was set to take effect today. And time now, it's 5.08 and it's about 74 degrees out there. Still ahead, we'll tell you about a new feature on the popular messaging app that will, a messaging app that will allow users to encrypt their chat history backups. Taking a look outside with the live cam, pretty mild this morning, and as you can see, a little foggy out there, so be careful on the roadways. We'll be right back.
San Antonio cyclist Tito Bradshaw being killed by a drunk driver last year was bad enough for Bradshaw's friends and family. For them, a plea deal this week was another blow. The 70 year old driver who hit him with no record will serve 20 days in jail. Jesse Degollado says it was a decision that was hard for the cyclist friends to accept. Work goes on at the bike shop Tito Bradshaw once owned. Wanting to move on, he had offered the space to his friend and fellow cyclist Joe Richard Naranjo, who had the auto mechanic shop behind his. Six months later, Bradshaw was struck and killed on his bicycle by a driver since convicted of intoxication manslaughter, 70-year-old Linda Collier Mason. Pretty mad at her, you know. Yeah, we didn't take it too good. Especially the plea deal Mason was given, 10 years probation, 20 days in jail, and 100 days under house arrest. Upset and disappointed though he may be, Joe Richard Naranjo says the time has come to truly let his friend begin his ride in paradise. Look, please let's let Tito rest in peace. I don't think Tito wants to sit here and dwell and be hating on this woman all our lives. Naranjo says he wants to try to forgive her, but hasn't yet. The loss of a friend, father, and a beloved figure in San Antonio's cycling community is far too great. How do you replace that? 20 days in jail, even 20 years in jail wouldn't replace it. That's why I'm saying, let it go. That'll be hard for Javier Cepeda, who says Bradshaw gave him the second chance he needed by giving him a job. For him, the sentence was a message to cyclists. That's what it's looking like, that they don't care about our safety. However, they may be feeling what is certain. We're gonna try to move forward and we miss him and we love him. We love you, Tito. Jesse De Gullado, KSAT 12 News. Friday morning, 5 14 rather, 74 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to tell you about Tinder's new feature that helps users find a wedding date. Truthfully, it's frustrating to see how fast dust reappears. But dusting with a cloth is a pain. And dealing with a bulky vacuum is such a hassle. Ugh. So now we use our Swiffer Sweeper and dusters. The fluffy fibers, they pick up dust easily, wrapping it in all those hard to reach places. Gotcha. And for our floors, Sweeper's textured cloths lock all kinds of dirt, dust, and pet hair. Unlike my vacuum, it sneaks under and around places. Look at that. Dust free and hassle free. Stop cleaning, start Swiffering. Did you hear that? I heard that. It's that time of fear again. This ghost of Earth stream over 50 hours of premieres all month long on Discovery Plus. This is the Goldfield Hotel. You set your boundaries. I'm an Osborne. We don't have boundaries. Let's do this. We got the gang back together. Ghost of Earth stream all month long on Discovery Plus, the streaming home of Halloween. Today's Tech Bytes, a new way to fully secure WhatsApp messages. The instant messaging service owned by Facebook is starting to let users encrypt their chat history in the cloud. It's considered a patch to a big loophole, which governments have used to review private communications between individuals. Google is changing the way that we search on our mobile devices. The updated search engine allows continuous scrolling. It automatically loads the next set of results so you don't have to click the See More button. The gradual rollout of the feature is already underway. And Tinder is out with a new feature called Plus One. It's aimed at users looking for a date for what's expected to be the busiest wedding season since before the pandemic. Plus One weeds out those not interested in attending weddings. And who knows, maybe you could be planning your wedding next. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day and have a great weekend. Time check 518. And it's kind of foggy out there in some places. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, Mike was mentioning uh, patchy fog out there. We're definitely seeing that here at Loop 410 at Ray Ellison. Doesn't look too clear out there, so obviously make sure you're taking it slow on the roads this morning. Uh, but right now we're not spotting big issues out there, and that's the great news. Again, following all the situations that were happening yesterday, it's a nice change and definitely something to be thankful for this morning. Uh, but check out Loop 410 at Ray Ellison. Again, just a few folks out there this morning, not causing any delays right now, but again, make sure you're driving slow. Uh, but we take you to the map where we do see pretty much green on the screen, although we still have that stall of 281 southbound. 
we can get to it. There you go. Uh, right at Bassey Road. Looks like uh, we still have that there. So again, make sure you're checking those vehicles before you get out there this morning. But as I mentioned, some construction to be on the lookout for towards 35, a little bit past New Braunfels. Uh, I was checking the TxDOT website. We still have that bridge demolition that's going on there. That's led to the double main lane closure in both directions from Watson Lane to Conrad's Lane. Uh, keep in mind, this has been an ongoing project and is still happening up until uh, Thursday today, up until Thursday, October. Actually, that's an outdated one. It should be finishing on Saturday, but this will be continuing throughout the month of October overnight. The, the time is still the same eight in the evening to five in the morning. Just keep in mind this will be happening throughout the weekend. So mark your calendars and start planning accordingly. But right now the shot at trans guide again, so pretty foggy out there. So make sure you're driving with caution today, guys. Yeah, Stephen, I'm Mike. Some of these cameras, the fog is just thickening up since we went on the air at 430. And, yeah. and the thing too is, as is, is usually the case, it can clear up a little bit and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you know, the visibility changes pretty much in an instant or you can turn the corner and run into some fog. So uh, we're still getting a lot of pictures of all the rain that fell yesterday. And this one measured out right around Seguin about nine inches. And that was pretty common. A lot of times, you know, the, the nine inch rain amounts or even six inches are the, the exception. But that was almost the rule yesterday, especially heading off to the east and in toward Gonzales County. And that kind of reminded me yesterday I went to take the trash out and I forgot to closed the lid on it and it was right at the corner of the garage where all the rain came off and one of those giant trash things about oh. three quarters full of water. Oh no. It was so hard to even tip that thing over. I bet. So you have your own private mosquito farm now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I emptied it. Oh, okay. and, and that raises a good point. Uh, make sure you look around and you know any standing water, make sure you dump that out so we don't get any more mosquitoes around here. All right, talking about the fog, you can't even see the control tower out there at the airport right now. Six miles visibility officially. Quarter mile Hondo, seven Kerrville, four at Pleasanton and Uvalde. A lot of very thick fog, Rock Springs, and then going down uh, 37 in toward Beeville, as well as going down 35 toward Catula. Again, this will continue to thicken up as the morning rolls on, and it's actually more humid. It was fairly humid yesterday morning, but more humid than what it was yesterday. Dew points have gone up in most instances, and a lot of that, of course, and one of the reasons for all the fog, not only the very high humidity in the atmosphere, but the moisture coming out of the ground from all the rain yesterday. All right, we're going to keep uh, fog around this morning and then it'll start to clear out by late morning. Early afternoon, a couple of scattered showers. This is along the front moving on through. Obviously, it's going to come through the hill country first of all and then continue on down to the south. Again, we'll see one or two showers out there. Um, I doubt if there's any claps of thunder. Don't be surprised by that if there is. But as the front continues to push on down to the south, all of that rain is going to push on down. So most everybody is going to be rain free, maybe left over down to the south right around kickoff time tonight. But it's going to be a good football weather. Going to be windy, though, and temperatures are going to be dropping. We'll hit our high early afternoon, and then that will drop down. Obviously, the high is going to be earlier uh, um, up in the hill country. Keep a lot of high clouds around over the weekend, uh, but temperatures are going to be fantastic. This is a pretty good cold front as far as the entire nation is concerned. Down to 37 at Denver and we have some wind chill temperatures around the country as well. So we're not going to be dealing with that. However, it is going to be nice and chilly. Some of the coldest we've seen since all the way back to last spring. 82 degrees. Partly cloudy skies today at noon. And then that front's going to be moving through obviously the hill country. First of all, here in town about 2 o'clock, give or take, wind shifts around, a couple of showers get squeezed out, and temperatures will drop then into the upper 70s by late in the afternoon and continue to drop down. And for football weather, yep, it's going to be, oh gosh, let's say about 70. Windy, take a jacket, continues to drop into the 60s. Oh, it's going to be good. Well, you know, what would be cool is if Mike appeared at local HEB stores in the lobby like a greeter and said, soup and grilled cheese, soup and grilled cheese. <laughs> Soup and grilled cheese. Or you could put the combo. Yeah. You know, the coupons for the combo. Yeah. A discount. That's a good idea. Are you listening, H B? Yeah. Yeah. You may hear from H E B later <laughs> and, today. And have and have the different combinations there. You yes. can do, you know, just regular grilled cheese and tomato soup yes. or do a nice uh, chicken, maybe even a navy bean soup and then come up with the different cheeses to go See, with. It. So, that sounds the good. ambassador of soup it's, and grilled cheese. It's going to be a soup and grilled cheese just kind of smorgasbord all yes. around here. And there Hopefully he goes. we have plenty of opportunities to take advantage yeah. of that. As Mike <laughs> exits stage right. <laughs> or left. Which is it? I forget. Stand down. Anyway. This would be stage right. There you go. Bye, Mike. <laughs> stage By out. 23, about 74 <laughs> degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, George Clooney directs Ben Affleck in a new movie. Plus, 
new music from Carlos Santana. 526, two award-winning actor-directors have teamed up again. CNN's David Daniel tells us who's on which side of the camera in today's Hollywood Minute. I saw you in the yard playing sports. You're not very good. Now find some other activities. I like to read. You read enough of those. Maybe you could become a writer. Ben Affleck is a favorite uncle dispensing wisdom to a future writer in The Tender Bar. George Clooney directed the drama based on the memoir of Pulitzer Prize winning writer J.R. Moringer. The first trailer just dropped. The film arrives in theaters in December and on Amazon Prime Video in January. Expectation has been very built up. Michael Shannon is set to play one of the 20th century's most controversial politicians. He'll star in McCarthy about the rise and fall of fiery U.S. Senator Joseph McCarthy. Amelia Clark co-stars as his ambitious wife. Production is set to begin next fall. You got me losing my head. I never know what I said. You got me spinning around and around. New music from Carlos Santana. The legendary guitarist collaborates with an all-star group of performers on his new album, Blessings and Miracles, including Rob Thomas and American authors on the song, Move. I am so grateful to God, the universe, Rob, uh, Clive Davis, because I am the recipient of uh, some divine intelligence that orchestrated all of these uh, ingredients and components and nutrients um, that, that I get to just close my eyes, play the guitar and complete a dream. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, about 74 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, former President Bill Clinton is in the hospital this morning. We're going to have the latest on his condition. Plus, learning about our pollinators and why they are so important. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. Learn how you can attend the Butterfly and Pollinator Festival happening this weekend. Making headlines this morning, latest on former President Bill Clinton after a trip to a California hospital this week. And taking a look outside with the live cam, we're at 74 degrees, pretty mild this morning, but there's fog out there. Yeah, it's hard to see anything in the downtown area. That's changed just in the last hour or so. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, October 15th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, a lot of fog right now, but what we're excited about, not the fog, uh, the cold front. Yeah, it's a cold front. It's a whopper of a cold front. Here's Mike with more on the timing of that. Yeah, because you step outside and uh, first you notice that it still feels like late summer. It is warm. It is humid. Temperatures are about anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Should be in the low 60s right now. We're at 75. 74 is the dew point. So these two numbers are obviously running neck and neck. We don't have any wind really to uh, deal with. And so those are a couple of good ingredients to get some of this fog. And it's six miles visibility out there at the airport. Port, five burning stage. Honda is still holding at just a quarter mile and seven in Kerrville. Then a whole lot more around Uvalde, Catula, and down around Beeville. This will continue to stick around. It's going to continue to thicken up as the morning rolls on, as it usually does as we approach sunrise. Molds on the high side. The updated count is going to be coming out in um, well, about what, a couple of hours, maybe hour, hour and a half. And it's going to be interesting to see what mold does with all this moisture around here from yesterday's rain. Ragweed is on the moderate side. And throughout the rest of today, 82 at noon, and then we will continue up and hit our high temperature. High temperature in the hill country is going to be about noon and then or one o'clock, and then we will hit our high of roughly two o'clock, 85 degrees, and then drop down to the upper 70s when that front moves on through here. The wind's going to be shifting around. We'll see dew points and the humidity drop down significantly and temperatures will continue to cool off. It's going to be breezy tonight. It's going to be fantastic. Downright chilly the next uh, few mornings. Low mid 50s, maybe upper 40s or mid 40s in parts of the hill country. Going to be a good looking weekend. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso, anything big problem wise out there? No, and, and we're really thankful for that this morning. My 35 at Salado Creek, we still have some barriers out there following yesterday's uh, flooding that we had been seeing. But uh, again, if you, if you see some barriers, just don't drive around them, avoid those areas. But right now, the roads are still pretty clear. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about that patchy fog. We've been seeing that, especially on 410 at Ray Ellison. 
Jefferson, but the shot at 410 to Starcrest a little bit further up north does show that the roads are pretty clear and wide open right now. So again, take it easy out there. Enjoy a cup of coffee and just enjoy the ride to work this morning because you're not going to encounter many issues out there. But if you get in your vehicle, make sure it is working properly. Uh, we're starting to see those stalls coming in this early US 90 westbound and General McMullen a stall detected out there. Seeing another stall not too far, a little bit further down actually off I 10 eastbound at New Braunfels Avenue. Uh, we did see a few stalls yesterday during uh, the, the event that we were seeing out on the road. So again, it is still very early. Make sure that you are making sure everything works properly. Fuel levels, windshield wipers, tires, make sure everything is in business before you get out there this morning. But thankfully, it is still pretty quiet on the roads. We did have that stall off 281 southbound at Bassey Road, but it looks like that has since cleared out. I was checking the trans guide camera, so some good news there. And the great news is it's still green across the board if you're traveling to San Antonio in the next few moments. So no need to rush out the door again. Just enjoy the drive to your early morning destination. We have more construction spots to be on the lookout for as well as gas prices coming up in the next few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Steve. And a trip to California for former President Bill Clinton turned into a trip to the hospital. Seen as Rick Conway has the latest on how he's doing and when he could be released. Are literally former President Bill Clinton has been hospitalized. Apparently he was not feeling well uh, all day Tuesday and was taken to the hospital. Dr. Sanjay Gupta spoke to the former president's doctors and members of his staff who say he tested negative for COVID-19. They also made it clear this was not a heart related issue. Clinton had heart bypass surgery in 2004 and had two stints inserted in 2010. What they think is going on with the president, the former president now is uh, a blood infection, uh, sometimes known as sepsis. His doctors now saying that the uh, infection originated in his urinary tract. Clinton is being treated in the ICU, but his doctors say that's primarily for safety and privacy. This is an infection that is now being treated with IV antibiotics, and what they're saying is that he is responding well to those antibiotics. The former president's doctors say he could be released as soon as today, but would stay on oral antibiotics. They think he's doing okay. He was joking around apparently with the staff complaining about the hospital food, but it sounds like he's, he's, he's on the mend, and that was their language, on the mend. I'm Britt Conway reporting. A federal grand jury has indicted a former key executives of Boeing for fraud. It alleges Mark Forkner deceived the FAA while it was certifying the 737 MAX jet in 2016 and 2017. The charge is the first criminal charges against someone in the investigation into the cause of two crashes that killed 346 people. Turns out a big design flaw was behind them. The indictment says Forkner deceived the agency about the operating parameters of the safety feature of a safety feature on the aircraft. The U.S. has officially rejoined the United Nations Human Rights Council. The U.S. withdrew under President Donald Trump three years ago. U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Linda Thomas-Greenfield says the U.S. plans to focus efforts on Afghanistan, Syria, and Yemen, among others. She says the U.S. will continue to promote women's rights and oppose religious intolerance, racial and ethnic injustices, and violence against minority groups. Here at home, a $52 million bond to improve Southside ISD schools will be up to the voters next month. The district says schools are in desperate need of upgrades and new technology. Southside ISD employee and bond committee member Victoria Marsh toured schools in the district. She says lockers are falling apart, foundation and structural repairs are needed, and new equipment that's more compatible with students' electronic devices for learning are a must. She hopes voters feel the same. These things really do need to be done um, and it's either we do it with this particular bond that's not going to increase our taxes at all or we wait and then risk the opportunity or the chance of increasing our property taxes or not being able to get the bond. A projected 8,000 homes coming to the district over the next 10 years could also contribute to school funding in addition to property values that continue to increase. Time check 538 still about 74 degrees be on the lookout for fog. And still ahead, we'll tell you why mortgage rates are going up again and how high experts think they'll go. Next, a closer look at new numbers that show more people are dying from drug overdoses. And taking a look outside with live cam, like Mark says, be careful with that fog out there this morning. As far as temperatures, kind of mild, 74 degrees, but we are expecting change later this Friday. We'll be right back. 
541 this morning. New data from the CDC shows a record number of people die from drug overdoses in a 12 month period during the pandemic. CNN's Mandy Gaither has a look at the new numbers. During the pandemic, a new record high. More than 96,000 drug overdose deaths reported from March 2020 to March 2021, according to new numbers from the CDC. Each uh, person who has lost their life during this time period leaves behind a family and a community who misses them. It's an increase of nearly 30% in these deaths from the year before. Vermont had the largest increase in overdose deaths of any state. Reported overdose deaths there rose more than 85% in that time period. So these tragic statistics really speak to the despair that many Americans are experiencing throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. The CDC says opioids accounted for the highest number of overdose deaths, followed by synthetic opioids, excluding methadone. Dr. Trent Hall's research on the overdose crisis in Ohio was published in JAMA Network Open last year. The addiction medicine specialist at Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center says the increase in the synthetic opioid fentanyl is highly concerning. Fentanyl is coming to contaminate uh, local drug supplies in new areas, and that's pretty scary. But Hall says there is hope. Treatment helps, and so can being prepared. We carry a naloxone rescue kit, as you can see here. Um, this is something that we can all carry around, and in the event that we encounter someone who's experiencing overdose, you can save a life. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And time now, it's 542 and it's about 74 degrees out there. Well, up next, if you actually can find the gifts you're looking for, we'll tell you what you need to know about the shipping deadlines ahead of the upcoming holiday season. And welcome back. It's 545. In your morning consumer headlines, mortgage rates are going up again. The average interest rate on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage rose to 3.05% this week. And Freddie Mac says that's the highest rate since April. The 15-year fixed rate mortgage rose 2.3% after falling steadily during the first year of the pandemic. Rates reached a record low at the beginning of 2021, then rose through the spring. Now, rates are expected to continue to gradually rise, but while rates are still historically low, home prices continue to hover near record highs. Nation's three largest package delivery services are out with their holiday shipping deadlines. The recommended final shipping days for the U.S. Postal Service, FedEx, and UPS, pretty much the same as they were the last couple of years. For UPS three-day select and FedEx three-day freight arriving by Christmas Eve, you need to ship your items by the 21st. For Postal Service retail, ground delivery arriving before Christmas Day, you should ship by December 15th. But even if you miss or meet rather meet those deadlines, you could see late packages due to ongoing pandemic and altogether now global supply chain disruptions. Lots of problems. Mm -hmm. 546 right now on your Friday morning. And it's foggy out there, but at last check of the TransGuide cameras, it appears things are okay so far. Let's check in with Steven. Yeah, the roads are pretty clear, but that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it's entirely clear. As Steph just mentioned, there's definitely a few patchy fog spots out there that we've been seeing on TransGuide 410 at Starcrest shows that it's pretty clear right now and a traffic still very light at 281 at San Pedro. We've been seeing a few stalls out there, but nothing too big that's going to impact that morning drive. You definitely want to, again, just make sure you're taking it slow on the roads this morning. And I have to just say this again, you know, mornings like this, our mornings like yesterday, that is, really make mornings like this very, uh, very nice to actually be on the roadways. It looks like I may have jinxed it there. We're seeing something there, our 1604 at Military. Find out what that is in just a moment. But right now, we do want to bring you back to the map. 90 at westbound at General McMullen. We still have a stall reported out there. Check those vehicles because we're seeing another one right there at I-10 eastbound at New Braunfels Avenue. And uh, we talked about construction spots as well. Uh, this one happening up here off I-10 eastbound. The alternating will lead to an alternating main lane closure in both directions from Greytown Road to FM 1518. Uh, this is for barrier installation and asphalt work. It should be wrapping up by Sunday, October 17th. Uh, Texas has it listed at 830 in the morning up to 530 in the morning on Sunday, but it looks like they may have gotten a head start overnight because we are seeing a buildup in that area. So again, just make sure that you are planning accordingly. And if you need to head to the gas station, maybe you're going to be heading
heading to Fredericksburg this weekend to really enjoy that nice weather. Well, we have these gas prices right here for you to, if you're heading to the pump right now. Bear County average gas price is 287 and around the state we are looking at 293. Now this national average we continue to talk about because we do see a continuous uh, it continuing to rise 330 right now is what AAA reports and they're saying that that is the number that just continues to jump two cents more than what we saw on Monday. So again, just make sure that you keep an eye on those gas prices. We definitely will as well as the roads. We're going to find out what's going on off 1604 at military. So stay with us for all those updates, guys. Thank you, Steve and Mike. I posted early on Facebook. Good morning, foggy and then a front. Mike says take a sweatshirt or jacket to Friday football. And Debbie Vargas Williams wrote yay for cold okay. fronts. At least the first one. Yes, true. yeah, technically I want to say the second one, but this is the you know, it's more be, impact. <laughs> yeah, more of an impact because the last one, it kind of took a while for the, the cooler air to kind of move on in here before, behind that front. But this one's going to be moving in very quickly. Um, beautiful moon out there. It is just past the first quarter. It's going to be full on the 20th and it should be uh, Fairly nice looking moon gazing weather tonight. This morning, uh -uh, no good sunrises in a lot of places because as we've been talking about, we've got a lot of fog and six miles visibility officially out there at the airport. Everything has stayed steady, it looks like, for about the past uh, half an hour. Uh, Port SA and Randolph have kind of swapped numbers there. Port SA is back up to 10 miles visibility, 7 at Randolph, Beeville down to a quarter mile, and out in portions of the hill country as well. Again, this is going to stick around all morning long. It will get thicker at times. It will improve at times, but just be aware of some of that fog and may make the roads kind of dampish as well. All right, as far as the front, it's going to be mid early mid afternoon, early afternoon or earlier, obviously in the hill country. And as it moves on through here, it's going to squeeze out a couple of uh, scattered showers. I doubt if there's any thunder associated with these, any lightning strikes, but that's a possibility that will all continue to push down to the south throughout the course of the evening. And then by football time should be everything out of the area as far as any rain. And again, it's going to be few and far between as far as showers go anyway. And we will still keep, though, a lot of clouds around here, a lot of high clouds. So it's still going to be fantastic weather this weekend, just not completely clear blue skies with a lot of those high clouds hanging around here. All right, as far as the timing of it, dew point temperatures remain very high. But again, once the wind shifts around here, it's going to pull in the drier air, and this will be early mid afternoon and that dry air continues to filter on in here throughout the course of the evening into tomorrow and that's going to allow temperatures to really drop down nicely and then the cooler air will continue to push on in here and so we'll have even uh, chillier temperatures by Sunday morning about 50 here in town so 40s in the hill country. Here's the big big trough up to the north and that's what's pulling that front on through here so stays very nice over the weekend. Then things start to sort of modify a little bit going into next week, and we will have some milder temperatures. Another big low is going to work its way across the northern portion of the country, and hopefully it's looking like that may give us a chance for some rain. Not real good, but that will have another front, another chance of rain coming through here by perhaps late Wednesday and Thursday of next week. So the forecast today, we are going to have a lot of fog around this morning, partly cloudy skies at noon, 82 degrees, and then we'll make it up to 85 right about two o'clock or so front comes through temperatures will drop down going for 78 late uh, this afternoon right around five six o'clock dinner time shower as the front moves through earlier on in the afternoon and then we will uh, have just a great night for football it's going to be windy it's going to be windy tomorrow 75 for a high temperature tomorrow that's where we were for low temperatures basically it seems like the past few mornings and uh, low 50s mid to low 50s over the weekend and even going into uh, monday morning Steph, Steph calls that running weather, whether you're yes. running errands or <laughs> running to a soccer game or whatever. Yeah, it makes it pleasant when you're running, running. in some form yes. or fashion. Even for I, a jog. Yes. I call it sleeping in weather. So. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> too. 5.52, about 74 degrees. And if you ever wanted to play as Doctor Who, there's a new video game that lets you do just that. Plus a new twist on the classic Tetris. We're going to have a preview next. But first, your lottery numbers. Pick three, eight, seven, five, Fireball five, Daily four, four, one, seven, zero, Fireball one. Cash five, 10, 14, 19, 24, 32. And your Texas two-step, one, 15, 26, 28. Bonus ball, 35. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up. Former President Clinton is in the hospital this morning, admitted for a non-COVID-related infection. 
We are live at that hospital with the latest on his condition, that plus much more right here on GMA. We'll see you soon. Crystal yourself. As a wise man once said, I'll see. Daleks, Cybermen, and Weeping Angels? This sounds like a mission for the Doctor, or rather, two Doctors. Doctor Who, The Edge of Reality, features the voice of the 13th Doctor, Jodie Whittaker, and you, the gamer, as a second time traveling Doctor on a mission to save the universe, naturally. The wibbly wobbly timey wimey game is out now for PC, Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox game systems. <laughs> Seriously, how many of us out there imagined this is what our Hot Wheels cars looked like when we sent them down that trademark orange track? Hot Wheels Unleashed is the latest model pitting those pocket-sized cars against each other on the racetrack. The game features 12-person multiplayer, local split-screen play, and track customization, and is out now for Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Here come those bricks again. Tetris Effect Connected is the Nintendo Switch version of the latest iteration of the classic puzzle game. Connected lets gamers play competitively or cooperatively. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Top stories coming up. A man shot overnight on the city's west side. San Antonio police still looking for two suspects. We'll tell you what we know. And we'll take you to the scene of the cleanup underway after a woman crashes her vehicle into a house over on the east side. And Transkite, if you're hitting the roads, we have some flashing lights, 1604 out there by military right now. Main problem right now, especially in the outlying areas, is going to be some fog. We had the rain in the area yesterday, but big changes in store for the weekend. Mike has more coming up in your local forecast right here on GMSA. It's a shooting whose motive is still unclear. The San Antonio Department in search of two men responsible for landing one man in the hospital this morning. Details coming up next. This morning, a massive fire burning in Northern California. We will have the very latest. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, definitely patches of fog out there, so be careful as you head out. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now and a good morning to you it's friday october 15th thanks for joining us today we are so excited about the cold front that we're expecting later but let's get through the fog first yeah fog this morning and then if you have those halloween inflatables in the front yard you might want to <laughs> Bring them in. Yeah, we have one. We have Jack Skellington out there and he needs to come inside. Yeah, at, or at least leave them uh, <laughs> flat. Un, uh, flat flat for the for part of the weekend. Yes. Bring garbage cans, uh, yeah. stuff yeah. like that. Now this morning, as far as fog, looking at this picture, it almost looks like um, out there at the airport, it has improved slightly. Uh, visibility is still being reported at six miles. It's dropped at Port S.A. Randolph Hondo is still holding at just a quarter mile. New Braunfels is slightly better than what it was earlier this morning. The visibility there, Hondo, then Uvalde, both a quarter of a mile. Same thing, Beeville, Rock Springs also has some fog. So it's kind of uh, it's thicker on the the bookends, if you will. But we will you know, obviously continue to see this throughout the rest of the morning. Mold is on the high side. It's going to be interesting to see what that uh, reading is once the updated count comes out in about uh, an hour, hour and a half. Ragweed is moderate. Temperatures are going to stay pretty steady. We're about 10 close to 15 degrees above normal right now. The wind for the time being is out of the south to southeast, but it is going to be shifting around. We're looking at uh, right around low 80s at noon, and then temperatures are going to get up into the mid 80s right around 2 o'clock or so, and then continue to drop down. So we'll be in the upper 70s by 5 o'clock late afternoon dinner time, and that wind will shift around out of the north 15 to 25 miles per hour, and temperatures will continue to drop down. So if you are thinking about uh, heading off to a football game tonight, I'd take a sweatshirt or a jacket. We are going to have windy conditions, wind out of the north still, and about 70 degrees kickoff, mid 60s as it goes in through the rest of the game. It's going to be great football weather and a fantastic weekend is setting up. We'll talk about temperatures and how chilly it's going to be this weekend. And uh, right now, traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos, it's been kind of sort of quiet 
so far? It was, Mike, and then uh, I think we jinxed it here. Uh, we got a crash here of Loop 16 to 4 at Military. You can see from this shot at Transguide, still pretty foggy out there right now, so make sure you're driving carefully. Uh, but those flashing lights indicating, obviously, a first responder presence on the scene at this moment. Very tough to make out exactly uh, how many vehicles are, if it was just one or two involved in this crash. But we will continue to watch that closely, and we are going to take you right to the map and show you that crash detected off Loop 16 to 4 northbound at Military Drive. So again, make sure that you are driving carefully this morning. It's been smooth sailings for the most part, but we spotted a few stalls still reported out there. This one still reported on US 90 westbound at General McMullen. Our map now picking it up there with that icon. So again, make sure you're checking the vehicles, tires and driving very carefully this morning because the roads are pretty treacherous yesterday. Right now, we're not seeing a lot of issues that build up on I 10 eastbound where we uh, had seen it a little bit earlier. Looks like it's cleared out. So again, just make sure that you are driving carefully through that area while TxDOT has not listed any high water spots on their website just yet. Uh, we know that that was a big, big problem spot out there yesterday. So again, just drive carefully and make good choices on the roadways this morning. Right now, these inbound times thankfully are very good. Uh, green across the board, even if you're coming in from Seguin, 29 minutes, no need to rush to the downtown San Antonio area. So that's some pretty good news, but we're going to continue to keep our eyes on this crash. 1604 at military. Again, drive carefully. We'll have all those updates coming up in the next few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Day two of a recovery mission in East Bear County is set to begin at daylight. Firefighters will try to remove the body of a woman from a car stuck in fast moving water. It's happening off Greytown Road near the city of St. Hedwig. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, we understand they've already recovered the body of a five year old girl from a second car. Bring us up to speed on what's happening today. Yeah, sadly, they have recovered the girl. Uh, now, I would expect more of the same today. Yesterday, they pulled out all the stops. They had firefighters with diving equipment, boats, helicopters, drones, and even canine units out here all involved in this. But the outcome today will most likely depend a lot on nature. Now, in a briefing yesterday evening, Sheriff Javier Salazar said the swift water was interfering with their efforts. It's also the reason for the situation. Two carloads of people, including several children, got swept away here on their way to school yesterday morning. Firefighters were able to rescue a man and a total of four children, but the woman and five-year-old girl each went down with the cars they were in. Yesterday afternoon, firefighters pulled the girl from the car, which had gone under water. They were not able to reach the woman in a different car under about 16 feet of water. The sheriff told us that woman is one of the people who actually called 911 yesterday morning, and she gave dispatchers a play by play on what was happening as she was frantically asking for help. And then eventually she did go down with the car. Now, also this morning, uh, classes are set to resume at the elementary school where that five year old girl uh, was a student. And we understand that they did have grief counselors there yesterday, and we are expecting that they will be there again this morning. Reporting live in East Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for suspects involved in a shooting that sent one man to the hospital. Jonathan Cotto joins us live with the details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. This all taking place at the victim's very own home that's located on South San Joaquin near West Commerce Street and Buena Vista. Information is limited, but this is what we know so far. San Antonio Police Department say two men in their 20s drove to this West Side home with only one intention. They say those men pulled up in a dark colored vehicle and shouted out for the victim by his name. This all happening close to 10 p.m. last night. Police say the victim ended up coming out from inside his home when one of the suspects shot him in the leg. They tell us those two suspects then walked back to their vehicle and drove off heading northbound on San Joaquin. Now the victim was taken to University Hospital. He's expected to be okay, but as far as the motive or what provoked those two men to drive to this house and shoot the victim, well, that remains under investigation. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. An argument between construction workers ends with one man in the hospital and one arrested. 32-year-old Sammy Villa is accused of hitting a man he was working with in the head with a hammer after they got into an argument. The man who was hit was taken to the hospital. Police say the supervisor saw Villa hit the other man with the hammer, and police were able to arrest Villa a couple of days after that incident. Also new this morning, cleanup underway on the east side this morning after a woman crashed her vehicle into a parked car in a house's patio. This happened around 3 this morning in East Carson near I-35. 
San Antonio police say the crash caused minor damage. No one was hurt and the woman was not driving under the influence. In your morning headlines, crews in Northern California are working to control a fire that broke out yesterday. The Sacramento Fire Department says the Discovery Park fire has burned at least 50 acres and is only 10% contained. No injuries have been reported. One Sacramento fire official says the fire was caused by a human, but it's unclear how exactly it started. Millions of U.S. families receiving their fourth enhanced child tax credit payment. The IRS says it's sending out checks today that average about $428. The coronavirus relief package in March is making the credit fully refundable, triggering payments. Columbia University researchers think the first two payments lifted more than 3 million kids out of poverty. Unfortunately, the IRS says it's hard to get the checks to low-income families that did not file their taxes in 2019 and again in 2020. This morning, former President Bill Clinton is in the hospital. He's suffering from a blood infection which has landed him in the intensive care unit. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning, former President Bill Clinton is hospitalized in Southern California, being treated in the ICU for a blood infection, also known as sepsis. Doctors at UC Irvine Medical Center are stressing Clinton's diagnosis is not related to COVID and is not related to his history of heart disease. My sources are telling me that President Clinton on Tuesday evening was feeling rather fatigued at a private event in California, and he went to the hospital and they did a routine checkup in the emergency department and they identified an infection of his blood. According to the hospital, Clinton was given an IV and is responding well to antibiotics. Overnight, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton seen leaving the hospital after visiting her husband. It's the latest health scare for the 75-year-old since leaving office. He had quadruple bypass surgery in 2004 and a pair of stents implanted in 2010. Sepsis can be a serious matter, but since President Clinton is about to be transitioned to oral antibiotics, it is less likely that the infection has affected his heart. In the past, the former president has attributed his health problems to a bad diet, a busy work schedule, and ignoring warning signs. Since I left the White House, maybe if I'd stayed on a lower yeah. fat diet, you know, maybe if I had not eating so many hamburgers and steaks, you know, which I love. Maybe if I, you know, had slightly less stress in my life, I worked as hard since I left office as I did when I was there. Maybe it would have been different. Doctors say they hope to discharge Clinton soon, possibly as early as today. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. 610, about 74 degrees. And ahead on GMSA, the Houston Astros are just four wins away from a trip to the World Series. We're going to have a preview, one of the ALCS. Game one of the ALCS. Yes, game one of the ALCS. And the very latest on the coronavirus in the U.S. Key FDA vote made yesterday on the vaccine front. We will have the details. And taking a look outside with live cam. We're at 74 degrees. We are starting off pretty mild for your day, but we are expecting a big change later in the evening. We're going to be talk checking in with Mike after the break. And welcome back at 614. An FDA advisory panel has voted unanimously to recommend Moderna's booster shot. The same panel will take up Johnson & Johnson's booster today. President Biden is now saying the downward trends in COVID cases proves his pandemic plan is working. ABC's Dan Lieberman has the latest. We do have a unanimous 19 out of 19 yes vote. A key vote from the FDA panel yesterday recommending a third booster shot of the Moderna vaccine to be given six months after the second dose. For anyone 65 and older, 18 and older at high risk from an underlying health condition and whose job may be put at greater risk for exposure to the virus. The Moderna vaccine remains highly effective, showing less waning over time than Pfizer and J&J. &J. The Moderna booster would be only a half dose, data showing that it's enough to restore protection. Today, the panel will review the Johnson & Johnson booster, along with data on the effectiveness of mixing vaccines. I suspect they may recommend a mixing and a matching strategy for J&J. &J. We'll have to see what the panel really decides. Ahead of that FDA meeting, the president praised the country's vaccination efforts. It's working. We're making progress. Nationally, daily cases are down 47%. And Americans may be in for a potentially turbulent holiday travel season. The TSA now reporting that an alarming 40% of their workers remain unvaccinated, 
with a deadline to get a shot looming just before Thanksgiving. Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. 615. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen. Uh, looks like there are some problems out there at 1604. Yeah, and it looks pretty foggy, right? From 1604 at Military, the shot at Trans Guide shows those flashing lights out there in the distance. You can see it's uh, we got traffic moving through that area pretty smoothly right now, but uh, you obviously drive with caution to slow down and increase that distance between vehicles this morning. Uh, this is a crash that is not causing big problems just yet, but keep in mind it has been out there for quite a while, and that fog doesn't look like it's helping uh, the situation right now. So make sure that again you are driving with caution this morning, uh, taking you right to our map that is detected off Loop 1604 northbound at Military Drive. As reflected, we are not seeing any buildup in either the north or southbound lanes of 1604. But again, make sure that you are taking it easy out there this morning. Uh, not the only issue we've spotted so far. We do have a stall there still off US 90 westbound at General McMullen. It has been there for quite a while, and it's not the only one. We see them coming in, and then we see them uh, going out, but then we see them coming right back in. We got a new one off the I-30. Northbound at San Pedro Avenue. So make sure you are checking those cars before you get out there. We continue to remind everyone vehicles, uh, fuel level, tires, windshield wipers. Make sure that everything is working properly before you get out there on the roadways this morning because it is still very dark. And as we always like to say, you don't want to experience any trouble out on the roadways this early in the morning. And but right now, this is what we're going to continue to watch off 1604 at military. Still pretty foggy out there, but let's go ahead and check in with Mike. Are we going to see this throughout the day? No, not throughout the day, but the rest of the morning. We're going to see fog off and on. Uh, in some places, it has gotten a little thicker, and then it has the uh, visibility has improved, and it's going to be going back and forth at least through sunrise, and then probably even in through the 8 o'clock hour. It's 73 degrees, a uh, little bit of patchy fog here and there. Wind out of the southeast, and this 85 is going to be probably just before school lets out, right around 2 o'clock here in town, and then the wind is going to be shifting around. We get the front moving through here in town about 2 o'clock. A uh, couple of showers going to get squeezed out early mid afternoon and temperatures will then start to drop down. So by later on this afternoon, about dinner time, we're going to be just in the upper 70s here in town. All right, we've got to show some of these pictures out there. We missed one yesterday, but there are the skeletons. And by the way, just uh, no skeletons were harmed in the making of the milk crate challenge. <laughs> Got another one coming up at 630 cool. as well. So that will be uh, today's picture. But that's that's fantastic. Keep it up all the way for the next couple of weeks, all the way through uh, Halloween. All right, out there at the airport, a little bit of fog. Um, not bad visibility from this vantage point, and it's still being reported at six miles, six at Port SA. Now, Hondo has improved slightly and just hints of fog in and around the metropolitan area, but a lot more out here in portions of the hill country. Rock Springs, three quarters of a mile, quarter mile visibility at Uvalde, as well as down around Beeville. Uh, temperatures, we are in the mid 70s here in town, low to mid 70s. All these readings are anywhere from 10, 15 degrees above normal, maybe even a little bit higher than that. We should be in the low 60s right now. And of course, we've got all this moisture out there. It is being pumped in from the Gulf and then also moisture in the ground from all the rain that we had. And that's what's helping out with the fog. So we're well above that 60 degree threshold where you start to feel the humidity. But that will definitely be changing by, again, early afternoon, early mid afternoon, depending on where you are sooner in portions of the hill country. Lots of clouds hanging around here and there's the front moving on through and as it moves through, it's going to touch off a couple of showers. I doubt if we see any thunderstorms, but just to don't be surprised with that. But there'll be few and far between 20% chance for some rain scattered line that will continue to work its way down to the uh, south and most everything is going to be out of the area. Any rain that does pop up should be out of the area by the time football games get going tonight. It is going to be windy. Temperatures will continue to drop down once the front moves on through here and over the weekend. I know this looks very cloudy. It's depicting a lot of high clouds and I think that's going to be the situation over the weekend. So that will keep us from getting quite as cold as what we actually could get on Sunday morning. Still going to be pretty darn chilly for low temperatures over the morning uh, over the weekend. I should say 82 at noon, partly cloudy skies. Then we'll go up to 85 degrees right around two o'clock here in town and then start to drop down into the upper 70s by late afternoon dinner time. Couple of showers as the front moves through and then that's all going to be pushed on out of here. Windy conditions and the next couple of days are going to be Great fall weather. Again, a lot of kind of high clouds hanging around here. Still windy tomorrow. We start up in the mid 50s, get up to the mid 70s, low 50s on Sunday. 
which means 40s in the Hill Country Sunday and even down around 52 degrees starting off Monday morning. Milder next week and then another chance of rain by maybe late Wednesday, Thursday. Stevens advice triggered a thought just now with a first drop in temperatures. You're going to want to check your tire pressure this weekend after yeah. we see temperatures drop back down. And always remember cold tire pressure before cold. you. Yeah, don't drive game, so. somewhere for an hour and then check right. your tire pressure. <laughs> kind of defeats the purpose. Thank you, Mike. 621, about 74 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Google is changing the way we search on our phones. Details after the break. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Brought to you by Toyota. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. When honoring your loved one, don't forget the salt. When a spirit makes its journey back to the world of the living, it's believed salt protects their soul from corruption during their stay. Salt also represents the earth, which is one of the Aztec's four elements of nature. It's usually placed in clay vessels or in the shape of a cross on the bottom level beside other elements of purification. When your loved one's visit is over, make sure they're pure for their journey back. So don't forget the salt. What can I do with less asthma? With Depixin, I can do more. Oh, yard work. Like teamwork. Long walks. Hey, hi, Tim. Game on. That's how you do more with Depixin, which helps prevent asthma attacks. Depixin's not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function with better breathing in as little as two weeks. It can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here are some of the important. Depixin can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Hey, come on. Just ask your asthma specialist about Depixin. Google is changing the way we search on our mobile devices, and this makes sense. The updated search engine allows continuous scrolling, so it automatically loads the next set of results so you don't have to click on See More. The gradual rollout of the feature is already underway. And Tinder is out with a new feature called Plus One. It is aimed at users looking for a date for what's expected to be the busiest wedding season since before the pandemic. Plus one weeds out those not interested in attending weddings. Right now, 625, about 74 degrees. And firefighters in East Bear County will attempt to recover the body of a woman from a car that was swept away in high water. Katrina Weber will have the latest. And Stephen will have the latest on the roads. Fog is going to be our main issue this morning because the roads are pretty much dry compared to yesterday. We have updates from our experts coming up at the bottom of the hour. It is dark now, but daylight is expected to bring a lot more activity. Firefighters back here again, trying to recover the body of a woman swept away in high water. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we'll be highlighting the contributions of one small particular group coming up next. And outside with live camp, fog is the problem now, and then a big front later. Mike is standing by with more and your weekend forecast. We made it to Friday. Good morning, everybody. It is October 15th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. We're excited about that cold front. It's going to make for nice Friday football weather, definitely. Yeah, Mike has mentioned cool fronts recently, but this one is a genuine cold front. Yeah, you know, we had one a couple of weeks ago, and it did bring in some colder air, but it took a while for that mm -hmm. to come in. This yeah. one should see temperatures starting to drop down very quickly and behind it. The air will dry out very quickly and behind it. It's going to be windy. Anything but fallish right now. Very warm, very humid, and it's real hazy looking off in the distance because of uh, some of the fog out there. And one of the reasons for that is these two numbers are just neck and neck. Temperature and then the dew point is right on the heels of that. And we don't have a lot of wind to deal with. And so again, a couple of the good ingredients to get some fog. Half mile visibility Hondo. Port SA 
has dropped down now to three miles visibility, so it is getting a little bit thicker, kind of moving in here from west to east. And then Uvalde's a lot of fog, Rock Springs, Beeville. Not much off to the east, more of it off in portions of the hill country. But again, we've got to be on the lookout throughout the uh, 630 right now, at least for the next couple of hours. Mold is high, ragweed is moderate. It's going to be interesting to see what the mold count is, given the fact we have all this moisture left over from yesterday's rain. So patchy fog, really mild conditions. Then the front will move through. Uh, going for about 2 o'clock here in town today, obviously sooner in the hill country. As it comes through, it's going to squeeze out one or two showers. 20% chance for some rain, so doubt if we see anything. And if anything does pop up as the front continues to push to the south, that should clear it on out, at least any of the rain by uh, later on this afternoon and dinner time. So not going to have any problem with football games tonight. It is going to be windy. It is going to be cooler. Temperatures will drop down in behind that front. Chilly mornings or downright cold down in the 40s in parts of the hill country by Sunday morning, mid 70s in the afternoon. A lot of high clouds hanging around here. Just a really, really nice, nice weekend and milder next week will sort of rebound somewhat and then we have a chance for some rain, maybe the mid to latter portion of next week. Details in the weekend coming up. Time saver, time saver, traffic authority. Wow, that was a <laughs> from the past. It's a anyway. flashback Friday. That's what See, they call it. Yeah, yes. traffic authority. Traffic authority. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, well, the roads have been wide open, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's clear out there. You can see from this shot at Transguide 1604 at Military does show that it is still a little bit foggy out there. We did have a crash that was detected a few minutes ago, but uh, you can see right now based on the shot, the lanes are open. But again, always drive carefully out there, especially when there is patchy fog. Uh, let's take a look right now. That crash did clear out off Loop 1604 northbound at Military Drive. Still see the problem with stalls persisting out on the roadways. We have this stall off US 90 westbound at General McMullen. It's been there for quite a while and we have this one up off I-35 northbound at San Pedro Avenue. Now something off 281 popped up on the tech stop website there at Bassey Road. Uh, there was a uh, stall detected out there a little bit earlier, so we're not sure if it's a new one uh, or if it's the same one that, that just popped up back on there. So make sure your vehicles are working properly before getting out there. And before that temperature change, as Mark was mentioning as well, make sure you are checking your tire pressure. I know I need to do that. Uh, we did have some road debris that was detected not not too far from there off I-37 northbound at Pecan Valley, not causing any issues. It looks like it cleared out, but the morning has showed us that it's pretty green on the screen. Of course, we like to see that, especially on a Friday morning. And as we take a look at these inbound times, we're seeing the same thing there. Green across the board, no problems at all heading to the downtown San Antonio area. So a great time to grab that cup of coffee and just enjoy the ride this morning. Taking a look at Transguide one last time. Still a little bit foggy out there. Again, just take your time when you're getting out there, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Now to our top story this morning. Firefighters out in East Bear County will try again today. Once the sun comes up, they'll make another attempt to recover the body of a woman from a car that was swept away in high water. Katrina Weber is live where this is happening off of Graytown Road near the city of St. Hedwig. And Katrina, it looks like they still have the road shut down. Has the water receded at all? Yeah, that road is still shut down. Uh, we haven't been able to get close to that area, but I can tell you the last word we have from the sheriff's office is that the water had actually risen. Earlier yesterday, they said that those cars were in about eight feet of water, but by yesterday evening, that level had doubled. Now, all of that fast moving water is the reason that they were not able to reach that woman yesterday. It's also the reason that this happened in the first place. Two cars got swept away when they tried to cross Greytown Road. Both of them had children inside. Firefighters were able to rescue a man and a total of four children from both of those vehicles. But the woman in one car and a five-year-old girl in another both went down in those vehicles. Yesterday evening, Sheriff Javier Salazar announced that the girl, the body of the girl had been recovered. He said that they would come back after daylight today to recover the woman's body. And we expect that they will be back with all of their diving equipment and boats that they had out here yesterday. Also expected back are grief counselors at the school that the little girl attended. Now, the school is located right around the corner from here. So there's a good chance that her fellow students had to see all of this as they come to and from school. So those grief counselors will be on hand again today. Reporting live in East Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Two children, two teens and their mother are recovering after they were rescued from their vehicle nearly submerged in high water on the far south side last night. Happened off of FM 1937 and South Flores near the Medina River. 
When deputies with the Bear County Sheriff's Office and fire crews arrived, they say rather they saw the two teens and the two children on the roof of the vehicle. Crews say the children's mother drove around a barricade and tried to get across a roadway, but the water was too high. Everyone was able to climb to safety across the ladder of a San Antonio Fire Department truck. Mom did go around the barricade. I mean, it's important to note that that is an arrestable offense. I mean, obviously, Mom's been through a lot today. We didn't want to go that route. But quite frankly, she could be facing criminal charges later on down the road. You know, I think at that point, if you're facing criminal charges, that's the least of your worries. Uh, I think she, she pretty quickly realized that her herself and her four kids could be gone. No injuries reported. Sheriff Salazar says when you see water on the road, even after the storms have passed, you are urged to, uh, urged to avoid it. Turn around and don't drown. And you this morning, San Antonio police are looking for two people involved in a west side shooting that sent one man to the hospital. It happened around 10 last night at a home on South San Joaquin near Old Highway 90. That's where San Antonio police say two men in their 20s pulled up in a dark colored sedan and called out for the victim by name. When he came outside, one of the men shot him in the leg. The victim was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. A federal appeals court is once again allowing Texas to continue banning most abortions. Last night's decision keeps the law known as Senate Bill 8 in place as the Justice Department tries to halt the law. The Biden administration is suing Texas over restrictions that ban abortions once cardiac activity is detected, usually around six weeks. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals now has allowed the law to proceed three times since August. The Texas law allows private citizens to collect at least $10,000 in damages if they bring a successful lawsuit against any abortion provider who violates the restrictions. A commission tasked with studying potential changes to the Supreme Court is releasing a first look at its review. The draft report released last night is cautious in discussing proposals for expanding the court. However, it does approve of term limits for justices. The 36-member bipartisan commission has been studying court reform, but it was not charged with making recommendations under the White House order that created it. A final report from the committee is expected in about a month and would go to the president then. This morning, we are continuing Hispanic Heritage Month coverage as we hide the contributions of the Latinx community here in San Antonio. We're home to a diverse community of cultures, and there is one particular group bringing their Caribbean flavors to the Alamo City. Jonathan Cotto joins us live to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Stephanie. Well, I understand, we all understand those cooler months are approaching, and if you've used up all your PTO and you're craving something tropical, let's say like Puerto Rico, well, you don't have to go too far to experience their rich culture and their delicious food. Daniel Aponte and Carlos Ramos were both brought to Military City USA during their time in the United States Army, quickly making San Antonio home. In 2009, APRISA, the Association of Puerto Ricans, was founded a nonprofit organization that both Aponte and Ramos would help carry on. Carlos, my wife and I, and we decided, hey, let's, let's do this for the community, for the Puerto Rican community here, and also for the San Antonio community to better educate them on what we are all about. And so they did with one objective in mind, Nuestra Cultura para Todos, our culture for everyone. That was our, our, our motto, and we wanted to, you know, expose people, uh, not just from my generation, but from the newer generations, uh, to our culture, to, to what makes us us, you know, us, what makes us unique. Though Puerto Rico is nearly 2,000 miles from San Antonio, you won't have to go far to get a little taste of La Isla del Encanto or the Island of Enchantment. Aponte says every year they host a number of events, including the Latin Roots Music and Food Fest. That's where we bring all the Spanish foods from around San Antonio and, and uh, surrounding area. And we ask these vendors to come in and uh, provide their foods. Colombian food, Mexican, Peruvian, Puerto Rican, Cuban, wherever, Dominic, uh, from Dominican Republic. Both Ramos and Aponte say proceeds from their cultural events go to fund scholarships for those of Puerto Rican heritage and those with special needs. So those are things that we like to bring up to, to the people in San Antonio and around, around the nation. You know, that when, wherever we go around the world, we, we say, hey, we're Puerto Ricans and this is what we do. 
Well, there you have it. If you or anyone you know is of Puerto Rican heritage and can benefit of this scholarship or is a person of special needs, you can visit ksat.com for more information. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. 640, about 74 degrees. Learning about our pollinators and why they are so important. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. Learn how you can attend the Butterfly and Pollinator Festival happening this weekend. Welcome back at 644. This is the peak week for monarch butterfly migration in the San Antonio area. This as they make their great journey from Canada through the U.S. to Mexico for the winter. Since 2016, the Texas Butterfly Ranch, an organization dedicated to the awareness of the importance of pollinators and how they sustain our ecosystem, has hosted a festival as monarchs pass through our region. Sarah Costa spoke with the founder of the group about the importance monarchs and the progress has been made in sustaining them. Monarchs are considered a uh, cornerstone species, like if, the, if you know, the population goes down, then what does that say about everything else? Monica Makel, the founder of the Texas Butterfly Ranch, breaks it all down. Butterflies are not only beautiful pollinating creatures, they are backbone pollinators that are quickly disappearing due to climate change. It's why her organization's mission is to raise awareness of pollinator importance and why they are essential to sustaining our ecosystem. It's kind of like, you know, a car, you know, one screw falls out of the car, it's no big deal, but when all these little screws start to fall out, you're going to have a huge car wreck, and that's kind of where we're headed right now, unless we change things. And monarchs are, are indicators of a lot of those things, climate change, weather patterns, uh, you know, pesticide use, habitat destruction. It's why during the migration period, when monarchs stop in San Antonio on their journey from Canada to Mexico for the winter, the organization takes part in tagging and releasing hundreds of monarchs to track the numbers. She says you can think of San Antonio as a hospitality center for the butterfly. Everything's popping out, so it's, it's good. It's good for the butterflies. They're going to have plenty of nectar to fuel their journey and hopefully fatten up so they can make it through the winter because that's their goal right now is to get really big and fat. Not only to tag and release, the Texas Butterfly Ranch hosts an annual butterfly and pollinator festival to raise awareness about monarch preservation. One way you can help by planting a pollinator garden with native plants that's pesticide free. And since 2018, that awareness has started to pay off. We did a program with 300 for 300. We tried to get the community to plant 300 pollinator gardens for San Antonio's 300th birthday. And we rocked it. I think we, we got like three or 375 or so butterfly gardens planted. And I think we're up to like 700 now. The organization is hosting its Butterfly and Pollinator Festival this Saturday here at Confluence Park. If you want to be part of that parade, they're asking you to get here at 930. The parade kicks off at 945 and then at 10 a.m. Over 50 educational partners and vendors will open up, including free kayak rides and then festivities go until 2 p.m. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Thank you so much, Sarah. Taking a look around town, uh, roads are pretty wide open right now. We've had a few foggy spots on the Shots at Trans Guide, but thankfully the issues have been pretty quiet throughout the entire morning. We're going to continue to keep our fingers crossed here in the traffic lab. Uh, right now, 1604 at Old Hausman shows that we are seeing a little bit of a buildup with traffic, but uh, we'd really want to bring your attention to the map because we do have a stall still out there of US 281 northbound at Bassey Road. Not too far from there, a crash just came in off of I-37 southbound at Fair Avenue. I need to talk to our friends at Trans Guide to see how this is going to be impacting the morning drive, but thankfully right now, as you take a wider look at the map, it is pretty green on the screen, seeing a little bit of a buildup but there, but that's usual with the morning congestion, so nothing too major right now. One last look at Transguy Loop 410 at Ray Ellison, still foggy out there. 281 at Grayson, traffic moving pretty smoothly through that area. Let's head over to Mike, who's got a very interesting game of badminton going on. Yes, indeed, with the skeletons. I there love this there. setup. The uh, the judge is the little one up there, and then, of course, the dog is running away with the shuttlecock and that's yeah, fantastic. Hey, one thing with all of your uh, Halloween decorations, especially those inflatables, make sure they are tied down because with that front moving through, a lot of stuff is going to get just kind of blown around later on today. All right, we've got some fog looking off in the distance, especially off to the east. Port SA is down to five miles visibility right now. Still six at the airport, half mile Hondo, and obviously it gets thicker heading out 90 over toward uh, Uvalde, down 35 around uh, Catula. Also, another uh, thing to keep in mind, of course, all 
all of the rivers that are south and east of 35 and 10 are at their bank full or even in flood stage. So just watch that and a lot of the streams and creeks. And there may still be some of the, uh, the low water crossings that are flooded over from all the rain that we had yesterday. We are going to have uh, fog sticking around for probably the next couple of hours and then we'll see some sunshine. Now the front's going to move through about early afternoon up in the hill country, obviously first and up first of all, I should say, and it will touch off a couple of showers scattered along that front, about a 20% chance for some rain today, and that's going to continue to push on down to the south throughout the course of the afternoon and winds going to be shifting around. We'll hit our high temperature early in the afternoon and then temperatures will be dropping down very windy conditions, of course, and any of these scattered showers pretty much going to be out of the area by the time it's uh, game time tonight. Take a jacket to the game. It is going to be on the cool side and then we'll have some pretty chilly mornings the next couple of mornings and nice afternoons. We keep a lot of high clouds around though over the weekend. Still a fantastic fall weekend. 82 degrees at noon and then we're going to pop up to 85 and then drop down to 78 by later on uh, right around dinner time. Windy conditions again that shower is going to be early on early mid afternoon and most of that should be out of here and again by game time uh, right around kickoff about 70 degrees 67 by halftime and ooh, it's going to be good for football tonight. Low to mid 50s this weekend mid 70s for high temperatures. And Mike, did you want to share with our lovely viewers mm -hmm. my suggestion for your new ambassador job at HEB's around San Antonio? Oh, the yes. grilled cheese and soup. Yeah. yeah, you were as people walked in, you were going to say good morning, grilled cheese and soup, grilled cheese and soup, yeah, yes. or good afternoon. <laughs> yes, I suggested the coupons where you get something for your grilled cheese meal and Osterhage's combo a, loco. Yes, and you get a discount on a soup mm -hmm. item. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Okay. We'll I'll work on bite, that. So. All right, yeah. let us know if HEB calls. Okay, I okay. Will. All right, <laughs> 650 about 74 degrees. And if you've been searching for a house, you know the market has been pretty scary over the past few months. Tomorrow on GMSA, some pro tips on navigating the red hot sellers market. The road to the World Series begins tonight in Houston. The Astros will host the Boston Red Sox for game one of the ALCS. That game is set for tonight at seven at Minute Maid Park. I checked earlier, there are tickets still available. The winner of the best of seven will represent the American League in the upcoming World Series. And taking a look outside with a live cam again, we are looking forward to that cold front front. But for now, it's pretty mild at 74 degrees and patchy fog out there. So be careful. Out there. And happening today, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center hosting a blood drive and two Spurs season opener tickets will be given out. It's happening at the Donor Pavilion at I-10 West at First Park 10 Boulevard. Appointments can be made at SouthTexasBlood.org or by calling 210-731-5590. Tickets will be given out while supplies last. The season opener game is next Wednesday, October 20th. Well, compared to Thursday morning, today's commute has been a breeze so far. Yeah, it looks a lot better, but still foggy out there, Stephen. Yes, but we're very thankful for an easy Friday morning commute. Right now, no big issues out on the roadways. Uh, let's take a quick look around Transcott. As you can see, things are shaping up. Very weird shot there at the quarry, but thankfully nothing big right now. But check those vehicles. That's also reported off 281 northbound at Bassey. Not too far from there, we do have that stall off I-35 southbound at McCullough that just popped up. It has been a quiet morning so far with a few congestion spots, but we're going to continue to watch those throughout the morning, and that could just be regular morning commute, so we'll keep a close eye on it for now. Let's check in with with Mike. This picture is not bad over there by the airport looking off to the east uh, as far as the fog is concerned. Six miles visibility out there at the airport. Still half mile Hondo. Uh, it's getting a little thicker in spots, but nothing too pea soup except out there toward uh, Uvalde with a quarter mile visibility. Same thing Beeville half mile Catula and 75 degrees right now. It's very warm and humid. The front's going to be moving through early afternoon, so we'll hit our high temperature right around 1, 2 o'clock, about 85 degrees. A shower as that front moves through, then windy and behind it, cooler temperatures, and we're going to see lows in the low 50s over the weekend. Wow, sounds good. Sounds awesome. You guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here at 9.